Can you believe we saved this 35 foot contender? Now we're making it pretty. We're doing some beautification work and I'm curious, you know, what kind of equipment and stuff you guys use or what kind of chemical system you use when you're uh, buffing and waxing. You know, do you like 3M or is there another one you use? Leave me a comment, ask me some questions and let's uh, see what we find out. I'm curious to see what everybody's favorite is. Hey Tom, can you tell me what more you need to do here? Did you say you just need to sand and... Yeah, I, I gotta sand that down smooth, block it. And then I might have to go back in and fill up a void or two if there's any. Okay. Get sanded down to all the way to 2000 grit. Oh, okay, yeah. Buff it out, blend it in. Hey, can you show me where it was that Matt wants you to do that, that um, three foot area to show the customer? I'm just gonna hit it with compound. It's not really very oxidized, so. Okay. Compound should bring it back and then go back and hit it with polish. Okay. And wax. All right, nice. On the back of this transom here, pretty much the only thing that saved it was being cored with Kusabor instead of something like uh, plywood. If it would have been plywood, it probably would have been total completely. So the Kusa board is definitely, definitely the way to go. More expensive, but better product overall. So now that you're done with the transom, what are you working on over here now? You want to, can you show me that? Can we open up yeah. this door so that I can see and you could tell us a little bit about what you're doing? Seems as though since we're able to save the boat, the owners decided to do some additional work um, while it's here at the yard. And now I'm just going through with the, uh, 3M compound, buffing all the um, inside gel coat, get all the oxidization off. You can see where it's, you know, there's no shine really at all. So. And you can see the spot here that he originally did to show the owners what we could make it look like. Yeah. So he still has to do. And, and that's, that's just the compound still. Yeah, he still has to do the rest of the boat, but this was just a sampling. Cool. Yeah. It's Coming along. Moving along. Yeah. It's nice out here today. Oh, yeah. It's about 80 degrees. Sun's kind of covered up right now, but pretty nice. Got a light breeze, which makes it a little more manageable. We got the repair done on the transom. It's all looking really good. We're gonna buff this all out and keep on repairing. As you guys may have heard, we were able to save this contender. Tom was able to fix the transom. The engines are at Keys Yamaha. They have new lower units on them and they did a full inspection slash service on the top ends to make sure they were all good. While we are waiting for that to be completed and when they install them, Tom is doing some beautification here. We already did the transom area. It'll be a lot easier to buff out the transom with the engines off than it would be with the engines on. So we're doing that. He's presently working on the inside and then we'll get the outside done. And then at some time, like I said, Keys Yamaha, Camilla will come over and hang these engines. Whoa, can you believe they let this guy in the boatyard? Obviously they let anybody in. They do, me included, I'm so lucky. That's too bad. You know, you just gotta feel bad because you know, you figure it could be potentially ruining somebody's life losing their boat, you know? I think this used to have a keel. Is this your new project? <laughs> you can't give it away, right? The keel has been completely torn off this boat. Sad to think that this could have been potentially somebody's home that is now lost. Speculation is maybe it happened in a storm. Been on the bottom for some time. And this thing had to sink fast, like instantly. Looking like that. Wow, we're almost finished. Look at the glisten on this now. Today's a big day. We're taking this boat over to get its motors put on. Yeah, so uh, the owner doesn't have a truck that can move this. I'm doing something that I normally don't like to do, don't normally do. I'm gonna move it myself to keep this project rolling. My truck can definitely handle this, but you know, we're gonna take it over to the outboard motor shop so they can get these motors back on. That's what the plan is. Oh my goodness, this is gonna be good. I'm supposed to be helping him line this up. I'm not very good at these kind of things. Hopefully he can come straight back if you can see. 
How do I get in charge of jobs like this? Where are these guys? Whoa, you won't believe it. Look at this. I think I did it on the first try. Man, that guy is good. Hey, how'd I do on the first try? I think we got it. What? Look at us. Since we have such a short ways to go, I'm following behind Matt just so that nobody could rear end him. I think there might be a little bit more work that we're doing for this owner since we were able to save the boat from being totaled, but I'm not exactly sure. I think some electrical. I know we just did a big compound and wax on the whole boat inside and out, detailing it for him, and it looks 100% better. If you look at my previous video, you would see that it was pretty oxidized. So we just dropped a contender off at Keys Yamaha with Camillo, and they're gonna put the engines and rig everything back up, and uh, we're out of here. All unhooked? Double check, everything's unhooked, ball is clear of the tongue. Cool. I'll see you back at the shop. All right. All right, let's go see what TJ found. Let's see what we got here. TJ, when did you clean this last? Uh, about three weeks ago. Three weeks ago. Go ahead and pop that open. You can see if your strainer looks like that, you're not cleaning it often enough. So TJ had to remove the actual whole strainer because this is stuck in there from the growth. And uh, he's, he's gonna clean this all up. We might even have to run over to the store and get a new basket. We'll have to see. Here's your handy dandy scraper tool. Oh, by the way, if you guys don't have one of these, this is a tool made by strainermaintenance.com and they are very handy to have. You can get inside this way and clean them up in the lip. You can get this down in there in the bottom and scrape it, same thing with here, and it gets all the stuff out of there. It's been on a monthly program, but I think during the summer, we're gonna have to put them on, uh, what, two every two weeks, I think. Yeah. So that'll be, we'll put that on TJ's calendar and he'll just pop over every two weeks and clean this out and hopefully we don't have to pull this whole thing out anymore. Yeah. All right. All right. All right. That's Anna, I love it. friends of ours. See you later. TJ, how are we looking? Like new. Beautiful. Okay. Gently used. Yeah. Gently used. We're going to be uh, heading to the next boat. I wonder how many miles I'll walk today. It seems like all the boats are all the way down at the end. Not all the time, but some days it feels like that. And like some of these parking lots, if you walk from like this parking lot right here and you walk all the way down to the end of the dock down there, it's, a, it's about half a mile. So we're over here working on this very pretty 31.7 Riballo. It's pretty new. Unfortunately, there's a water leak on this thing and it is behind this fuel tank right here, back there, and there's no access to it. So we're chasing this thing. And man, I hope to goodness gracious, we don't have to pull down all these panels right here and pull this fuel tank. TJ pulled this back electrical panel. You seeing anything? No, not really. A couple fittings, but they're all clean. So we're gonna hop down here. Uh, it's leaking, TJ. It is again? Yep. It's running like crazy back here. That's why this boat is listing. I'll bet you that whole compartment back here is full of water. I couldn't see any. I was trying to get around the fuel tank and everything. Oh no, it's a steady running stream. Oh boy. Yeah, I don't know if you guys can see that, but that's running water right here. It's running like pretty good. So I just got off the phone with the owner. He's gonna call the boat broker and uh, I'm gonna call them and explain the situation on this boat because this could turn out to be a major deal. It could be a screw driven through the hull. It could be under the fuel tank. It could be under the black water tank. We'd have to remove the batteries. We'd have to move the electrical bulkhead. It's a bulkhead with all kinds of stuff mounted on it. We'll see what they have to say and we'll go from there. What do you guys think it is? Where's the leak at? Think it's a screw through the hull? Like I said, it's really not good access. And you can see that electrical panel out right there. We tried to get down in behind it, but it's all just jammed full of stuff. Can't really get in there. Well, that's kind of what I'm thinking. 
Damn, dude, did you bust ass? Yeah. <laughs> that stinks. Right on there. Whew, man. <laughs> Let me go see if we can get it put on a work rack and check the hall. I don't know what else to do. Oh, yeah, big leak. Yep. So we're underneath the boat, taking a quick look. If it was leaking, oh, oh, what's that right there? See that whole corner of that trim tab is all busted out. There, see that black spot? That's all a big bubble of gel coat that popped. It's probably got water coming into it. The trim tab probably hit right it. Right here? No, look oh, to the back side of the trim tab. Oh, holy yeah, shit. Yeah, there's a big old hole right there. Yeah, you're absolutely right. <laughs> there it wow. is, I bet you that's it. So I just wanted to say thanks to all you guys for all the views and comments and thumbs up. It really helps us out. Keeps us motivated to give you more good content. And I'm uh, down here. We're going to go take a look at a few things. And uh, But I just wanted to say thanks a lot.